In 2020, Nikola Motor Company became more valuable than Ford without selling any vehicles, products, or services, and without having any revenue. Its founder, Trevor Milton, became a billionaire and people were calling him the next Elon Musk. However, everything was built on lies and Trevor somehow managed to fool everyone, all the way to $34 billion. This is unfortunately a true story about Nikola, one of the biggest frauds in history. Trevor Milton was born in Layton, Utah in 1982. In 2004, 22-year-old Trevor dropped out of college after just one semester to start his first company called St. George Security and Alarm, an alarm system dealership. Two years later, Trevor sold this company to businessman Glenn Pills for $300,000. This is already where the first lie started. Trevor faked the company's books and misled Pills during the sale, and the business soon became a disaster. Years later, Pills told CNN how this purchase ruined his life. Pills said he took every dollar from his 401k and savings to buy this company and lost a $300,000 down payment and faced two home foreclosures after the business didn't live up to the projected financial returns. Immediately after the sale, Trevor started another company, upillar.com, a classified ad website focused on cars. Former employees said it struggled to find dealership clients or attract customers and never turned a profit. While all this was happening, Trevor founded an alternative energy vehicle company called D-Hybrid Inc., which retrofitted commercial trucks with engines that could run on natural gas instead of diesel, and it also had the ambition to build power plants in the future. Around this time, Trevor's company Upillar.com had laid off its employees and Trevor shifted his money and attention to D-Hybrid. The startup then landed the Swift contract, which included a $2 million upfront payment for research and development and to install the technology on the first batch of trucks. In 2012, Trevor sold D-Hybrid for $3 million to company S-Power. This sale resulted in a lawsuit from the buyer just one month later. Because D-Hybrid misrepresented its technology readiness, its engine system didn't perform as well as advertised, and it didn't meet environmental protection agency standards. What followed was the termination of the deal and Trevor soon closed the company. A few months later, in October 2012, Trevor and his father incorporated a new company with a very original name, D-Hybrid Systems. It was similar to the previous company, except with a greater focus on building natural gas and hydrogen storage systems. It operated from the same office with a D-Hybrid sign on the door. Just two years later, Trevor sold 80% of the company to Worthington Industries, a metals manufacturer, for $12 million in cash. One would think that Trevor learned his lesson after this lucky multi-million dollar exit, but this is just the beginning. This brings us to the year 2014, the year Trevor founded his most infamous startup, Nikola Motors, a company named after famous inventor Nikola Tesla. However, unlike electric car maker Tesla, which uses electric cars that are recharged by plugging them in, Nikola planned to build vehicles that use hydrogen fuel cell technology. Two years later in 2016, the company shocked the trucking world when it unveiled the Nikola One, a hydrogen-fueled semi-truck. Intended to be a sleeper cab with eight wheels, the design included a 320 kilowatt per hour EV battery that supplied six traction electric motors for 1,000 horsepower and 2,000 pound per feet of torque. The model was to get its 300 kilowatts of power and 1,200 mile range from hydrogen fuel cells. According to Trevor, the prototype shown at the event is already fully working. So it's a little expensive, okay? You could probably buy a jet with what it costs to build this thing. So we're gonna to try to keep people from uh, driving off, but this thing fully functions and works, which is really incredible. And this truck will come to market, I can promise you that. For every doubter out there that said that there's no way this is true. Abs how can that be possible? We've done it. It's my pleasure to actually let you guys enjoy the night, see the truck, know it's real, touch it, feel how sturdy it is. You're gonna see that this is a real truck. This is not a pusher. Everyone was shocked and the hype around the company grew rapidly. Nikola started making pre-orders immediately after the announcement and said that it had received 7,000 pre-orders, amounting to more than $2.3 billion. No one knew at the time this was all one big lie. Nikola had zero working trucks and weren't anywhere close to developing the technology needed for everything it promised. The fully working truck shown at the event was just an empty shell without any engine, assembled at the last minute, just a week before the show. It's hard to say if Trevor's plan was to scam everyone or if he really believed he can deliver on the promises, but it didn't change the fact that millions of dollars started pouring in. This apparently wasn't enough, and Nikola went through another round of investments. 
everyone wanted to be part of this historic breakthrough in the trucking world. But as time passed, suspicion grew among many people about the Nikola One and its capabilities. Following this, Nikola released a video of a seemingly fully functioning Nikola One truck driving down the road in Arizona. Once again, there was a lot of hype and excitement and people couldn't wait for the first pre-production units to be released. But at that time, Trevor didn't have any such plans. He only wanted to raise more money. This video was later found to be completely faked. The truck in the video had no engine, was towed to the top of the hill, and then rolled down to make it seem like it was fully working. One Nikola engineer later revealed that it even had duct tape doors though it wouldn't fall off and the Nikola One project was abandoned immediately after the 2016 reveal event. No one outside the company of course knew about this and people still believed in Nikola's plans. Around this time, 37-year-old Trevor owned 40% of the company, which was at that time worth $3 billion and became a billionaire, probably the only one that built this much wealth on just lies, without delivering literally anything. Since Trevor knew Nikola One isn't happening, he started to branch out to other activities. One of them was a worldwide chain of factories producing the world's cheapest hydrogen. However, this was quickly proven to be impossible and Nikola later admitted that it doesn't produce any hydrogen. Shocking, I know. Yet, oil giant BP invested in Nikola and wanted to work with it on its alternative fuel technology. In 2019, Nikola announced it would go public. This is the dream of every entrepreneur and investor. On the next day, Nikola revealed a new product, high density batteries that promised to double the efficiency and capacity of lithium ion batteries. Trevor called the prototype cell the single most important advancement in electric vehicle history. Following this, brewing company Anheuser-Busch pre-ordered 800 trucks with this new technology from Nikola. But as you might have guessed, this was yet another lie and these new batteries were never delivered. The reason why it happened is actually pretty funny for once. To develop this technology, Nikola bought the battery cell company Zapgo. And at this time, Nikola was the scammed one because Zapgo lied about its technology and it was one huge scam. Trevor probably hadn't done his due diligence because Zapgo CEO scammed NASA with this technology just a few months before this. This of course resulted in yet another lawsuit. All of this didn't stop Nikola and it successfully went public on June 4th, 2020. One week later, its valuation peaked at $34 billion. It reached this thanks to a hydrogen truck that was never made, fake batteries, and many other lies. On top of that, in that quarter, Nikola's revenue was $36,000 for installing solar panels on Trevor's house. To put this in perspective, Nikola was at this time more valuable than Ford, which had $28 billion valuation, the revenue of $155 billion, and sold 5 million vehicles. How is it possible that the investors didn't care about Nikola's financials, you ask? Well, another lie, of course. Nikola didn't go public via traditional IPO. He used a reverse merger. This way, it didn't have to disclose all the details about the company. However, this wasn't known back then. And at the time, Trevor was a superstar, overnight billionaire, genius, role model, next to Elon Musk. Amongst all of this, Nikola signed a $2 billion deal with GM for 11% stake in the company to build an electric SUV, Nikola Badger. It of course doesn't exist to this day. However, this glory didn't last long. On September 10th, 2020, two days after Nikola partnered with General Motors, short seller Heidenberg Research released a report accusing Trevor of making false statements over the course of many years and characterizing Nikola Motor Company as an intricate fraud. Nikola shares are tumbling after a short seller called the company, quote, an intricate fraud built on dozens of lies. It was later revealed that Hindenburg Research was working with a Nikola whistleblower for the report and that amateur private investigators were surveilling them on behalf of the company. Nikola's stock fell by 8% that day and an additional 15% the following day. And this was just the beginning of the free fall. Following this, Trevor deleted all his social media accounts and disappeared. 10 days after the report on September 20th, Trevor stepped down as CEO and Nikola was being sued by at least one law firm representing shareholders for possible fraud. The investigation started and one year later, in July 2021, the United States federal grand jury returned an indictment against Trevor Milton that included three counts of securities fraud and wire fraud. He also faces civil securities fraud charges from the SEC. Trevor surrendered to authorities, pled not guilty to the charges, and was freed on a $100 million bail. 
In October 2022, after a day of deliberation, the jury found Trevor guilty of one count of securities fraud and two counts of wire fraud, the most serious of which carries a maximum prison sentence of 20 years. Prosecutors portrayed Trevor as a serial fabricator who wooed investors by falsely claiming that Nikola was close to producing long-haul trucks that could run emission-free on cheap hydrogen. Trevor Milton is a con man, Jordan Estes' assistant U.S. attorney said as she summarized the government's case. He lied to investors to get their money, plain and simple. As of today, Trevor remains free on a $100 million bond as his sentencing on three fraud convictions was delayed until June 21, 2023. Why did all this happen? Trevor was a serial con man. He knew what investors wanted to hear and how to get their money. On top of that, 2020 was an insane year for the stock market. Everything went up, especially Tesla, which peaked at $1 trillion valuation that year. And investors were looking for the next Tesla and the next Elon Musk. And Trevor with Nikola seemed like the right fit. But maybe, just maybe, it was too good to be true. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, and see you soon.